Hey folks, Armin Hammer here, and today we're going to be talking about the 2020 CrossFit Games Open Leaderboard. And you might be wondering, why are we talking about the Open, the Open ended in November? Well, the video review process for this year's Open was actually much, much more intensive than it ever has been in the past. And while CrossFit missed their deadline, their mid-December deadline of finalizing the leaderboard and finalizing the video review process, they made the deadline of January 6th of finishing all of the video review process and starting to send out the invites, the first wave of invites for the open qualified athletes. That's the national champions and the top 20 worldwide. Now, there are a couple really interesting cases that we have to take a look at here. There is one situation that affects who gets the invite from a sanctioned event Let's go ahead and get into it. So let's go ahead and start this off by taking a look at the women's leaderboard. Now, uh, the biggest story here is probably that Sarah Sigmund's daughter has won the Open again. That's the second year in a row, and it's her third time winning the Open. Winning the Open is really, really hard to do. It's hard to do once. It's a lot harder to do three times, and it's really, really hard to do it two years in a row. And she had a, a pretty solid lead as well. I mean, Annie was in second place behind her, 15 points separating the two of them. Uh, they both had really, really impressive performances, but hats off to Sarah Sigmund's daughter for her second year in a row, uh, third overall. Now, you'll notice that the blue line here, the qualification line is actually after 33rd place. Now, the reason that happens is because if you are within the top 20 worldwide and you are a national champion, you do not count within the top 20 worldwide because you can only have one or the other in terms of a qualification method. So if what uh, the, what we ended up seeing happen basically is that the top 20 worldwide, they happen to be really, really good at CrossFit. So they also happen to be national champions. And as they found national champions, they just took that blue line and they threw it further and further down the list. Now, if they ended up at someone who also was a national champion, they don't count that person either. So they just keep going down the line. And we ended up with 33rd being where the blue line sits, but it's probably not going to stay there. And the reason it's not going to stay there is the athletes have one week to accept or decline their invite. They're, they're, they're going to have until January 13th to decline or accept their invites. And in the case of a few athletes here, three of them specifically, who have already qualified via team, they're going to be saying no, which means that that blue line is going to go further down. So let's go ahead and see. Those three athletes are uh, 30th place is Taylor Williamson. 15th place is Andrew Nissler. They're on the same team. They actually qualified through Dubai with the Misfit team. That was uh, uh, Travis Williams and Roy Gambo were the men's side of that team. That's going to come up when we talk about the men's leaderboard as well. And on top of those two athletes were also Brooke Haas, who is in 22nd place worldwide. She qualified in Filthy 150 with the Ramwad Meat Squad, which means that these invites are going to trickle down. Now, it won't go to the next three straight up because 34th place is Sarah Alicia Fernandez Cosas, who is the Spanish national champion. So it's going to even go further past her to Mary Kay Drisselker. I'm so sorry if I did not pronounce your name right. Sasha Nievas, who we saw set up a really, really impressive first place finish in 20.4, and Danielle Brandon. So those are going to be the three athletes who get the second wave of invites um, after the first three athletes that we talked about there, Andrew Nistler and Taylor Williamson and Brooke Haas, de deny, decline, deny, deny their invite in order to go team. Now onto the men's side where things even get crazier because this situation actually has spillover to the sanctioned event invites that we've seen already occur. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this. So in first place worldwide, Patrick Vellner, very impressive performance. Actually, interestingly enough, he's not the Canadian national champion. The Canadian national champion is Mr. Jeff Adler, who was able to beat Pat Vellner on the national leaderboard, which is where it counts for national champions. Remember, national champions are decided by the internal national le leaderboard, not your placing on the international leaderboard. So in a situation where Pat Vellner might beat Adler in a workout by 40 spots on the international leaderboard, he might only beat him by a couple of spots on the national leaderboard. And what that ends up doing is it makes the race much tighter, and it also means that the winner has to be able to, you know, stave off 
another athlete. So I'm not exactly sure where the situation was that they were, you know, sort of back and forth enough for Jeff Adler to take the win, but it happens because the field is only constrained to the national, uh, you know, people, the people of that nationality. So the Canadians that were competing and uh, the the battle within that leaderboard as opposed to the international leaderboard. So congratulations to Pat Vellner for winning the Open Worldwide. Congratulations to Jeff Adler for beating Pat Vellner in Canada where it counts. And Matt Fraser, by the way, second place. This is the first time since 2016 he's not the winner of the Worldwide Open. That's, uh, I mean, he's always talked about accidentally winning the Open. I don't think he's upset about not winning the Open this year. I don't think it really matters to him that much. Um, I, I'm confident that he's, you know, training his ass off and getting ready for this season since he already knows he has his spot locked up. But let's go ahead and talk about where the line is and what this is going to mean. Because the line on the men's side is at 28th place. By the way, 28th place, Ben Smith, 12th straight individual appearance at the CrossFit Games, 12th straight qualification. I mean, it helps that he started CrossFitting when he was like nine, so he's he's still in like the prime of his life. <laughs> but uh, no, seriously though, uh, huge congrats to Ben Smith, 12th straight. So anyway, we're at 28th here. The fact of the matter is, just like on the women's side, there are three athletes who we're gonna keep our eyes on who are probably, most likely, I'm gonna say 100% gonna be going team because they've already gotten their spot when it comes to the teams. Those athletes are Rogelio Gamboa, who is also known as Roy Gamboa. Uh, Roy qualified with the Misfit team, which is looking more and more monstrous by the second, by the way. We're talking about both women qualified individually and decline, are gonna be declining their, their spots to go team. Roy qualifies individually, is gonna be declining his spot to go team. And Mr. Travis Williams, who's been sort of on the forefront of the super team situation for a very long time, that team is looking super toit. It's gonna be a very interesting race, I think, between them and Mayhem. Speaking of Mayhem, right above Roy on the leaderboard is Mr. Rich Froning Jr. Now, Rich is, uh, you know, his team hasn't qualified for the games yet, but don't worry about it. I, he's gonna he's gonna be just fine. You don't need to you know you don't need to light the incense at the church or d have some sort of you know strange you know pagan ritual with involving chickens and candles and sacrifice. He's gonna be just fine. They're they're gonna qualify. So that's two. And number three is Brandon Luckett sitting in thirteenth place. His team qualified at Southfit. The Odd Squad qualified. Uh, he's on that team. And uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to be sticking to teams. So that's three spots. Three spots that get added onto that blue line. Let's go and see where that takes us because there's some interesting stuff here. Goes to Sean Sweeney. Congratulations, Sean. I think this is his best open performance. Uh, Willie George. Nope. Willie George is the French national champion. Line keeps going. Connor Duddy. Congratulations, Connor. And Mr. Brent Fakowski, who qualifies through the open. However, Brent Fakowski won the Dubai CrossFit Championship, which means that he would have gotten the spot through Dubai. But now, now that we are you know, pretty confident that he's gonna be getting an invite through the Open, his Dubai spot is gonna be going further and further down the leaderboard. Let's go ahead and take a look at where his Dubai spot is gonna end up. Because if we look at this leaderboard, it is chock full of national champions and qualified athletes. First place, Brent Fikowski. Second place, Pat Vellner. He won the Open Worldwide. There's his spot. Roman Krennikov, Russian national champion. BKG, Icelandic national champion. Lazar Dukic, Serbian national champion. Jonikowski, Finnish national champion. Jason Smith, South Africa national champion. Jeff Adler, Canadian national champion, which means Mr. Tola Morikinio is most likely in ninth place going to be getting the invite from Dubai. And we talked a little bit about that during the event, that that was gonna be a situation that might come up, but it is absolutely mind blowing that, that that's the level of competition at something like the Dubai CrossFit Championships, that ninth place on the men's side is gonna be getting the invite. So there you have it, folks. That is the 2020 CrossFit Games Open Leaderboard. I mean, it is basically finalized, completely finalized at this point. Now, the like I said, the three on the women's side, three on the men's side, they're gonna be declining their invitations, which means there's gonna be invites sent out again next week, but those, that's only a very small number. It's only a few athletes. And 
On top of that, everyone within the top 40 worldwide has been you know, extensively video reviewed. The video review process was finally wrapped up as well this past weekend, so that has been completely wrapped up. They don't need to go through any more situations where they like ask for videos or anything. I think they've already completely finished that up. So we're gonna be keeping our eyes on this situation to figure out exactly what's going on, but looking forward to this weekend is gonna be the Mayhem Classic. Now, I'm actually gonna be there. I'm gonna be in Cookville. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, I'm gonna be uh, hanging out with a whole bunch of cool athletes, spending some time with a bunch of people, getting a feel for the competition, seeing who's gonna you know, maybe punch their ticket to the games through that competition. Uh, between now and then, I'll have some preview content around who's going to be competing, some athletes to keep our eyes on, maybe a look at the events if we can get some of those details as well to be released out for everybody. And as always, I'm just really excited that I get to do this. And you know, it's a new year. I get I get to do this yet again. It's pretty 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 sweet. I gotta say it's pretty sweet. Remember, folks, there's a whole lot going on in our sport. It's easy to miss some of the most interesting and exciting stories. That is what I am here for. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you did, maybe like, you know, share the video or like or subscribe or leave a comment saying that it, it's all sweet or leave a comment saying that you like what my mullet has become over the past couple of years. Or maybe leave a comment about my Skywalker Ranch shirt. I don't know. Either way, <laughs> love hearing from you guys. Love talking to you guys. I'll talk to you guys soon.